Come on, big money, big money, big money. And another energy clip. Yesterday morning, I received a message from a subscriber asking whether I thought a barnacle could be set up to drop random items instead of setting it up ahead of time to drop a specific item. Challenge accepted. I'm going to start with a fresh map and drop in a barnacle. I'll name this barnacle Barnaby because Barney is kind of already taken. That's it, nothing more to do here. In a typical map, you can set the barnacle to drop an item using an AI attached item manager and that's how they seem to do it in the Valve maps. You set the target to the barnacle or barnacles you want to add items to. So here I'm just going to type in Barnaby. Then you would add how many items to drop in the number of attached items field. So I'll just set that to one for now. And next, you can set what the item is going to be from this drop down list. So I can select a rapid fire clip. And now let's compile this and make sure it works. If I shoot this barnacle, I should get a clip. And there's the rapid fire clip. Good, so that works. In order to randomize the drops, I'm going to add a Lua script in the barnacle under miscellaneous settings, entity scripts. The script here is called barnacle random drop Lua. Now remember your Lua scripts have to sit in your vscripts directory. Now let's head over to the script. I have a spawn function that I'm just using to output a debug statement so I know the script is running properly. Now if you set the name of the entity in your map, it should be accessible using the method getName on this entity. Now recall from earlier tutorials that this entity is the entity the script is associated with. So in this case, it's Barnaby the Barnacle. The meat of the script is in the activate function. And remember that runs after the items have spawned. So everything's already spawned in the map, then the activate function for each entity runs. First, I'll set up a local variable to store settings for an AI attached item manager that we'll create later on in this function. Next, I grab a random number between one and nine, and you can change this to suit whatever range you want, depending on how many items you want to pick from. I'm choosing nine because if you look back at the AI attached item manager in the map, you have eight items to choose from in the dropdown from the item slots. And I also want to include a chance for nothing to drop. Now I have this long if then else structure, which we'll use to set the item based on the random number. So for example, if the random number is a one, it's gonna drop an item HLVR clip shotgun multiple. If it's a five, it's gonna drop a frag grenade. If it's an eight, it's gonna drop resin, which is actually called item HLVR crafting currency small. Now you might notice that the property names in the script aren't the same as the ones displayed in the map when you look at the properties of the AI attached item manager. There's a trick to that. Click on the gear beside the property filter and select raw edit mode. Now you can see the names of the properties that you would use in your script to reference them. The last else in this if else structure is going to set item to nothing. Once we have our random item, we'll add some properties to a list for the AI attached item manager we're going to create. The origin is just some place in the map you want this AI attached item manager to spawn. But since it's going to be invisible, it doesn't really matter where, so I'm just going to spawn it close to where the barnacles are. The target property contains the name of the barnacle or barnacles you want to add items to. We'll grab the name from the entity itself using getName. As long as you name every barnacle differently in your map, you'll get a different random item for each barnacle. I mean, you might get the same if they happen to spawn the same item, but they're each gonna have a random item. If your barnacles are named the same, they'll all get the same item as the last one that spawned. And that's important because the script is gonna run over and over again, each time it runs, it's going to reset the item that the barnacle is holding. So you have to make sure your barnacles are named differently. Then comes the number of attached items, which I'll set to one here, but you can change that in experiment and set it to two, three, four, whatever you like. 
Finally, I'm gonna set item one to the random item chosen by the if then else structure up here. Next, we can use a spawn entity from table synchronous to create the entity with the first argument to the method being the class and the second argument, the local variable contain the settings. Now let's go back to our map and delete the AI attached item manager since the one the script creates replaces it. Now when we run this, we should get a random drop. Test one. Test two. Test three. Now we can add a bunch more barnacles, set each one with a unique name, and when we compile and run this map, each barnacle should drop something random. All right, so we've got seven barnacles to choose from. We'll just go through each and hopefully I don't run out of ammo or maybe I'll drop some ammo. So first one gives us a clip. Second one gives us a frag grenade. Oh, another frag grenade, whoops, come on. Some shells. Another energy clip. Health file. And finally, oh, out of ammo. And I didn't get a clip to fill us up. Let's uh let's see if we can kill us one another way. And another energy clip. Looks like our script worked. Even though some of them were repeated, it looks like each one got its own randomly generated item that it dropped. Now, funny, none of them dropped nothing, but that's just luck of the draw, right? So if I had, say, 20 of these, I'm sure at some point one of these would have dropped nothing. Thank you, Rebar77, for a suggestion I try and work this out. I think there might be some other ways of doing this, maybe using a table structure instead of that if then else. And if anyone has some ideas, please comment below. Hopefully you're finding these Lua tutorials useful. I'm really looking forward to playing through some of your mods and custom maps and seeing some variations on these Lua scripts in action. If you're already subscribed, thank you for your support. I just recently hit a thousand subscribers thanks in part to the Half-Life Alex modding community, which is really a niche within a niche. That kind of support really motivates me to make more of these tutorials. Thanks for watching and good luck with your modding.